Hello everybody, in this GIMP tutorial we're going to be talking about the grid and I'll be showing you how using the grid we can actually create our own graph paper although the grid is usually invisible and unprintable. So inside of GIMP I've gone ahead and created a new document that's of size 8.5 inches by 11 inches which I believe is the standard paper size. Whatever paper you want to print on to uh, make sure that you start a new document with those sizes. So inches, 8.5 by 11, if that's a paper size. You can, of course, increase the resolution if you want there to be more pixels in the document on the printout and for it to be a little bit more detailed. But in this case, it doesn't matter too much because we're really just drawing lines using a grid. So I'm going to hit OK for this. Or actually, I'll just hit Cancel for this because I already have the document created right here. And now, if I want to go ahead and use this to create graph paper, I can go to View, uh, Show Grid, and this kind of gives us what looks like graph paper, but it's far too small for the size of the squares. In order to increase the size of the squares, you go to Image, Configure Grid, and I like to make it about 50. Uh, actually, you could do it in inches as well. Um, so we could just say one inch, one inch. It might make more sense depending on your uh, paper itself. And in this case, that's probably a bit too big. So I'm going to knock that down to 0 0.5. And yeah, that's a bit more reasonable. So we'll hit OK there. And now you would think, OK, we have graph paper here. Great, we can go ahead and export it. But remember, the grid is invisible. So if we actually want to be able to create a visible graph paper, we need to create a new layer, first off, and then go to, I believe it's View, Snap to Grid. So when you're ready, go ahead and select the tool of your choice. Uh, generally, I would say pencil is a good choice here because we're trying to get a hard edge, something that's very solid. Change the brush to be basically pixel based so that it's completely solid. Uh, 20 pixels looks like that's going to be too much there so I'm actually going to knock that down to something more like 5. And now we can go back to the main document. Click up there. And now we can create our grid lines by clicking at the top of one, holding shift and bringing it all the way down to the bottom. Click a bit outside the grid, do the same thing up here, and as long as you're holding shift and have snap to grid enable, it's going to create perfect lines. So let's go ahead and do that again. In order for this to work, you do actually need to click within the document. So make sure you're not, say, left clicking outside of the bounds and then holding shift because that would get a bit weird. So click on the line and it'll automatically go to snap to the grid itself. And as long as you're careful here, you should be able to get a perfectly straight grid line every single time. So, one more time. If it helps, you can also zoom in a bit. So I'm going to do that here, clicking on the very bottom. And now holding shift, going up to the top. Doing it again, snapping to the grid, holding shift, click down, so on and so forth. And then when you're ready, just do the same thing diagonally for every grid line. It's a little bit tedious, but the advantage is that it'll always work, and you can do it with any brush you want, any size brushes you want. Uh, you really shouldn't run into any issues here. And after a couple minutes of a careful manipulation and snapping to the grid, you should be able to get basically a fully functional graph paper here, which you can export as a PNG. You can print out to a document. And as long as you were watching the image sizes when you were creating a new document, remember, measure it in the printout. It should be good for print as well. Whether or not you show the background is up to you. Uh, you probably actually want to leave it off because a white background is going to be standard anyway uh, when you're printing onto white paper, so you generally won't need that. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next GIMP tutorial.